Robert Smith Smith here, and I want to, with my little two-wheel demonstrator, explain to you about positive and negative camber and tow on a vehicle. The basic settings of the front suspension. Now, as you see here, I have an axle and then mounted on it two small bicycle wheels on spindles that are canted at an angle. That allows me to demonstrate to you this. Now, in the middle, I have a bolt in the center of the axle, and back in the early days of wagons, this is what you had. You had a solid beam axle, you had wheels mounted on the end on spindles, and then the axle pivoted it around this main pin, which became known as the king pin. So, you'll hear that term in car suspension and geometry technology over and over, king pin. This is early days, solid axle. Later, the axle became solid and doesn't tilt because you got a lot of mass here, plus the fact you have a geometry issues that there's no way around when you do this because both wheels are assuming the same angle, and as you turn, the wheels tend to plow and slip and slide and grind. So. Kingpin, solid axle. Now, camber. Camber is, positive camber is when the top of the wheels are away from the center line and the bottom contact areas are in toward the center line of the vehicle. Top splayed out at the top. You use positive camber on a vehicle that has a swing arm type suspension because if this was hinged here and as you applied load to the vehicle got heavier and heavier, then that would swing up and at, when it was properly loaded, the wheel should be straight up and straight down. The rear wheels on old Volkswagen Beetles were on swing arms and they would start out like this and as you added load on the vehicle by people and luggage, the back wheels would become vertical. And if you overloaded the vehicles, guess what they would do? They would do this. The suspension would keep swinging, compressing, and then the insides, the top of the wheels would be closer than the bottom of the wheels, the contact patches to the center line of the vehicle. And this is negative camber. High-performance race cars generally work with negative camber. The reason for the negative camber, if we look at one wheel, you start off with negative camber, and the car goes into a very violent high-speed turn, and there's a tremendous amount of load at the tire contact patch. Then compliance, the car tire uh, carcass will start flexing, the suspension members will start bending a little bit, and guess what? When it's all said and done, the wheel should be straight up to the ground at maximum dynamic load. Then as you come back on the straightaways, it goes back into negative camber. Just that simple. That's the reason for it on a high performance car. Now, if we move the closer parts of the wheels toward the center line forward, this is a condition called toe just like your toes, just like you have your toes pointed in, just think of skiers, especially on the bunny slopes. They're taught to stick their toes, tips of their skis inward. This is more stable, it's called the plow. Guess what, same thing on a vehicle. If you want stability, you turn the wheels leading edges in toward the center line, that's called toe in, not by this much, by the way. Then the backs conversely move out, and that, and you have a more stable vehicle than if you do the opposite. If the front steering wheels are towed out, the car can be violently twitchy. This can actually aid a car, a little bit of this could aid a car in turning in that tended to be a little lazy. Why this is less stable than a tow-in situation. And instability is not always a bad thing. Now you have to have enough stability to drive the car in a straight line at its top speed. But any more than that is counterproductive on a racing vehicle or a fighter plane, for example. 
Racing vehicles and fighter planes need to maneuver violently. If you build too much stability into them, they will be lazy and sluggish handling. You have to get them on the edge of stability for them to respond super quickly. And that's part of it. Now, this is an exaggeration, so it's easily seen. But again, there's toe in, there's toe out. That's positive camber, which we do not use. This is negative camber, which we do use along with usually a small amount of toe in for stability, especially to start with. Ideally, the wheel should be straight up and straight ahead at all times. That will absorb the least horsepower, have the least scrub at the contact patch, have the highest top speed, lowest rolling resistance, the best fuel mileage is straight up and straight ahead, but often that's just not stable enough to get the job done. So you put these settings in to make the car do what you want it to do, not what it wants to do. And that's tow and that's camber.